Hello everyone. It's time to resume work on this Mitsubishi 286 lap crusher here. That's about all I have time for this week due to work-related reasons. So let's get back to work on this thing. If you want to see the full teardown as well as the issues which prevented me from testing this machine, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Here's a quick recap. During my initial inspection, I found some nasty corrosion inside the power supply. I also found some damaged traces and a failed voltage regulator. I didn't have a suitable replacement voltage regulator on hand, so I had to order one. And that replacement is in. I went ahead and bought five of them, so I have five chances to repair this thing. I also went ahead and replaced all the small electrolytic capacitors, and some of those capacitors have most definitely leaked. That is certainly the source of all that corrosion. I still haven't received my replacements for the capacitors on the high voltage side. I'm getting kind of impatient, so I pulled them off to inspect them. They tested good and haven't leaked, so I'm just going to run these for now, and we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and get that replacement voltage regulator in, and see what this thing does. Alright, the new voltage regulator is in. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, it's not making that terrible squealing sound anymore. Alright, it's been about a minute or so. I'm going to go ahead and read the voltages off that connector and try to get a crude pin out. Okay, here's what I was able to suss out on that connector. I'm still not completely sure what pin 8 is doing. It seems to go between 1 and 5 volts, so it may be this power supply's equivalent of the PG or a power good signal on standard AT power supplies. But this should be enough for me to do a load test. And just in case you're playing along at home, I can't be completely sure that these voltages are what this power supply should be putting out on these pins but they seem cromulent to me. Use this pinout at your own risk. Let's go ahead and load test this thing. The sacrificial hard drives aren't getting out of this one. I also added an automotive light bulb for extra load on the 5 volt rail. So let's see what that gets us. Okay, we're doing good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and give that the full five minutes. See if we get any explosions. Okay, well that's five minutes and everything seems stable. This thing might be good. And I know I say this in every video where I work on a power supply, but it bears repeating, especially in this one. Working on power supplies is risky business, especially if you're performing repairs on them. So take heed of this multilingual warning. If you're new to working on power supplies, please be extremely careful. And if you're not confident in being able to work on one safely, just leave it to the professionals. Okay, I've been torturing this thing for about a half an hour now, just trying to build up my trust in it. I'm reasonably confident we can attempt to power up the laptop with it now, and if that doesn't work out, prepare to hear me scream in agony. Alright, well, here goes caution, flapping in the breeze. Let's see what happens. Alright, we got life. I don't see a cursor. Maybe I just need to adjust some settings. Aha, there we go. Yeah, that thing's posting. Alright, this thing is fixed. Ah, that feeling never gets old. But I better not celebrate too soon. Things could still explode. Alright, got a CMOS failure. No surprise there. Let's see if we can continue. Floppy drive not ready. Okay, we might have to configure the hard drive. Well, let's reboot. Okay, I think I need an external program to configure the CMOS settings on these. Well, I guess let's see if it boots from floppy. Continue. And yes, it does! It's sure taking a long time to figure out it doesn't have a CD drive. Well, while it's doing that, let me show you the screen invert function. <laughs> That's literally all it does. Certain applications are just easier to see in certain modes. Okay, well, we seem to be stuck on the CD drive detection. Let me go ahead and modify this boot disk and edit that out. And yep, that did the trick. I also got rid of Hymen because it seemed to be complaining. But yeah, this thing's working. I don't have much on this disc, but at least you can see monochrome edit. And this is the perfect example of why that invert switch is so important. See, it's barely visible in the normal mode. As soon as I switch to invert, there's our text. See, that switch saves you from having to adjust the contrast all the time. Because see, if I make it to where it's visible in this mode, if I switch it to invert, then it's almost invisible again. And this is what people had to deal with using 80s LCD monitors. Alright, let's get out of here. Okay, so let me see if I can find the CMOS configuration program for this, because I really want to see if that hard drive will boot. Okay, I found something that looks appropriate. Good old Vogons came through again, so let's see. Okay, so I guess we're going to run setup. See how that goes. 
Uh, sure. Date and time's correct. Okay, well, it's not detecting the hard drive, so we're going to say no. That's not correct. Okay, right side drive refers to the floppy drive, so that's type 4. There is no left side drive. There's no external drive. All right, here we go. Fixed disk type. We know that's type 11. Display device is an LCD. It is monochrome. Now, I'm not sure what size that extended memory board is, so for right now, I'm just going to leave that zero. I really just want to see if that hard drive works. Okay, zero again. Not worried about serial right now. Not worried about parallel right now either. All right, let's see what that gets us. Yes, it's correct. All right, press enter to reset the system. Let's get that disk out of there. Monitor unmatched. That's strange. But that hard drive just made a sound, so let's continue. Oh, ho! oh, it's booting. Yeah, that hard drive works. Let's see what's on that thing. Wow, all kinds of stuff. Looks like there's some car related stuff on here. Let's see what's in that Ford directory. Fordtest.exe. I gotta see what that's all about. Whoa. Is this actually for interfacing with a car? Maybe this is some kind of OBD1 interface program. Okay, well, I don't know what to do here. Let's just press enter. Okay, that kicks me out. That is interesting. There was also a Chrysler directory. Let's see if that's the same thing. Yeah, CRECM. That's got to refer to engine control module. That is interesting. Maybe this thing was being used in a mechanic shop. Let's see what's in that text file. I don't even know if edits in the path. Yeah, sure is. Yeah, this definitely is a old computer diagnostics program. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Diacom vehicle diagnostic system. <laughs> that is just too cool. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's see what else is on there. Let's see what version of DOS this is. DOS 5. Well, let's take a look at old WordPerfect. WP. Yeah, there it is. Uh-oh. I don't even know how to get out of here. I never really used WordPerfect in DOS. Screw it. I'm taking the easy way out. Control alt delete. Okay, the hard drive just made a very strange sound. A very flatulent sound. Hopefully it didn't die. Nope, we're still good. All right, what else do we have? Let's see what utils we have. Okay, all pretty basic stuff. Hmm, PC Plus. I wonder if that's what I think it is. This will be our... I want to say I faintly remember this being a dialer program. Let's press Alt-Z for help. And yep, sure is. I think this is the program my dad used to use to connect to BBS services. All right, let's press Alt-D for directory. Ah, there's a reference to Cal Poly or California Polytechnic. If you saw the first video, the power inverter that this thing came with was marked as being property of Cal Poly. So I guess that's the number for their dial-in service. Okay, that's very cool. Now, how do I get out of it? Alt-X. Yes. And hang up, even though nothing's connected. Okay, let's see what else is on here. Hmm, Carmen 2. I wonder if that's a Carmen San Diego game. And sure is. <laughs> Here's some monochrome gaming. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Please identify yourself. Yes, I'm new here. Your current rank is Gumshoe. <laughs> okay.
continue. Okay, I probably shouldn't get too deep into this right now. Quit. No. Okay, let's actually boot back to Floppy and check out that hard drive. Control Alt Delete. That drive makes some strange sounds on reboot. Are you ready for monochrome scan disk? <laughs> well, that's hard to see. Let's try inverting it. Well, that's slightly better. Wow, that looks terrible. Let's go back to normal mode. Wow, this hard drive's pretty full. Hey, I think we're gonna make it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, that's pretty amazing with that hard drive being in a portable. Let's go ahead and exit. Okay, I know what you really want to see. You want to see this thing run Keen 4. Okay, maybe it's just me. Oh, it just looks terrible. Let's try inverted. Nope, that's just as bad. Let's see. <laughs> it looks great if you're not moving. Let's see if we can make that a little better. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's go inverted. Honestly, I think that's worse. Yeah, that's definitely worse. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a gaming laptop. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can fix this latch. Now, this was just a bad design originally. The machine I had back in the day had the exact same problem. So we're gonna have to see if we can reinforce it. Okay, I've got that latch temporarily held together with super glue. So I'm gonna take a Dremel and try to cut some reliefs into the plastic. That way I can sink some epoxy down into it because there's just not enough clearance to try to reinforce it on the outer surface. So let's see how that goes. All right, the channel is cut. Now let's fill it up with epoxy. All right, that's cured up now. Let's get that spring back in there. There we go. Now let's get it back where it belongs and test it out. Okay, retraction works. Let's see if it closes. Okay, so far so good. And it opens. All right, that thing's fixed. Hopefully it holds up better than it did originally. Now let's get rid of this word perfect legend and clean this thing up. Just need a little IPA to get rid of that tape adhesive. And I gotta say, this is a really nice keyboard. Definitely desktop grade. All the keys have full travel. And I love this superfluous key between the Control and Alt key. I'm curious if that was used for anything before the Win9X days. Obviously this thing has no chance of running Win9X, with it being a 286 and all. Now, time to relive some monochrome memories. I'm tempted to take this thing to like a coffee shop or something and just use it like it's normal, just to see what people say. Should blend right in with all the MacBooks and iPads, right? But I'm so glad to have this thing working. It's definitely the most unique laptop I have now. And as always, Thank you so much to everyone for your continued support, especially the fine folks on Patreon. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled teardowns next week. I wish this video could have been longer, but I'm just way too busy this week. Being on call during a hurricane is definitely no fun. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.